E, you need to wake up. A voice called out to him through the comfortable haze of slumber. Han grumbled at being woken up from such a peaceful dream. Glancing next to him, he saw Brittany, still asleep. The way she wrapped herself up in the blanket made her look like she was in a cocoon. Getting up and sitting on the bed, he stretched out his arms and yawned. Conjuring an energy drink, he popped open the cap and enjoyed the sugar-infused liquid. Emptying the can and making the basketball shooting motion, it flew through the air and vanished. Feeling the caffeine kick in, he looked back at Brittany and leaned over to give her a kiss on the cheek. My beautiful creation, you need to get up. Her eyes flooded, and seeing him, Brittany smiled and unwrapped herself out of her blanket. Grabbing his uniform, Han casually put on the outfit while taking peeks at Brittany, sliding into her clothing. When she caught him staring, she giggled and blushed from the attention. Summoning a mirror, he checked himself to make sure that everything looked proper and neat. When Brittany finished putting on her clothing, they made their way out of the tent. The sun was warm and bright, illuminating the ancient city. Everyone was close to finishing up, packing up all their gear, and were occasionally looking over at them. He saw Celine standing next to Lydia, their packs already on their backs. E, you need to hurry up and get everything ready. The teacher said that we'll be starting the next part of the journey, so he can't delay. Celine scolded him for sleeping in. Han stretched out his neck while ignoring Celine's lecturing. With the two of them standing in front of the tent, Han just snapped his fingers and made the tent vanish. All that was remaining was the imprint in the grass and dirt, which was the only evidence that the shelter existed. Seeing Celine's surprised expression, he chuckled and walked over to where the teacher was sitting. Hayun was relaxing on top of some rocks that looked to be part of some structure. When she saw him approaching, she gave him a tired look. I cannot believe that you can make something that large appear and disappear. She sighed, thinking about his unusual ability. Grinning while shrugging his shoulders, he asked, I heard that we will be moving on to the next part of the class activity. I was curious about what we will be doing. Noticing how he casually ignored her statement, she said, In this city, there is an area that is usually infested with monsters. This is one of the reasons why the city is now in ruins, because out of nowhere, monster activities increased to the degree that overran the city's defenses. Now some nests are scattered about in this region. Under this force, there is a high concentration of mana, which may be the cause of the initial incident. To prevent the number of monsters from increasing, we will be going into the nest and exterminating monsters. With the ability that all of you have, there is no way that we will be able to clean out the nest, but it will be good for experience and skill building. Each of you already has a basic knowledge of combat as part of the requirement of being accepted into this academy. If anything happens, I will be here to oversee events as they transpire. How many monsters do you expect to be there? I assumed that there would be monsters inside the forest, but I did not see any on the way to the ruins. Han inquired. Hayun placed an index finger to her lips. The situation seemed to bother her. This was understandable, considering that this forest was known to have monsters, and then the monsters were no longer in the woods. Looking at Han, Hayun responded. This is a disconcerting event. Inside the nest, there should be several hundred monsters. The majority of them should be in the farthest part of the nest. At least that is how they are organized in prior nests that were exterminated. She sounded unsure about this fact. Nodding his head and thinking that there was no reason to continue asking questions, Han walked back to where the sisters were standing. From the sight of things, the other students were now ready and had everything packed up. Reaching Selene, she gave him a questioning look as if to ask what he had asked the teacher. Shaking his head, he replied, We'll be entering into a monster's nest and proceed with killing the monsters to improve our combat skills. 
Seeing her eyebrows go up from the news, Han continued, Considering how there should have been monsters inside the forest, I am concerned about entering into this nest with so many students that lack the necessary fighting skills. Do you think it will be safe for us? Celine asked, her voice indicating how worried she was. Compared to her experience with fighting off monsters in the place she grew up in, there was a difference between that and entering into a nest. Since the teacher will be there with us, there should not be any issues. He tried to comfort her, though he had an uneasy feeling building within. Brittany, let the jungle sisters know that we will be entering a monster's nest. From what the teacher said, there should be more nests in this forest. I want them to enter one of the nests and see what the distribution of monsters is like. Let them know that they have permission to eradicate all monsters. Make sure that they are focused on the numbers and setup of the monsters. Han ordered Brittany. Yes, Master. I will inform Anaclis and Arasia about their new mission. Brittany acknowledged. Hyun walked in front of the students and waited until she had their attention. We will now proceed to the next stage. Inside the ruins, there exists a monster's nest. The monsters that reside inside the nest are relatively weak so we will be killing them to help keep the population of the monsters small. Our goal is to not eliminate all the monsters, but to gain experience. This means that I will not tolerate students that act recklessly inside the nest. Instead of having each team enter separately, there will be three teams that will move as a group into the nest. Two groups will have four teams working together. The four team groups will be the first and last to enter into the nest. As the two groups with an extra team, your responsibility will be to make sure to keep the groups in the middle aware of changing situations. When you enter into the nest, there will be a long tunnel which will then branch into many. One of the four team groups will stay in this junction, along with a three team group. Splitting off from the main party, the other groups will head into one of the tunnels. Once you have killed a sufficient number of monsters, the primary force will return back to the junction to rejoin the secondary force. We will then rotate the group, and just like the first time, a second group will go back into the same tunnel. Depending on how successful we are, this will be repeated several times. After giving out the itinerary, Hyun began sorting the teams into different groups. There are now five large groups, with two of them having four teams. Looking at the teams that were added to his, Han thought it was interesting that both of them were composed of commoners. It seemed like Hai Yun had organized them so that nobles were set up with other nobles. Considering his ability, there wasn't a need for him to be concerned with being matched with commoners. At a second look, some of the commoners looked like people who were competent, at least when looking at their equipment. Like Hai Yun had said, students that are accepted into the academy have a base level fighting skills. With this in mind, it was unlikely that he would need to step in too often. Watching these commoners fight the monsters could be mildly entertaining, though he would step in if necessary. Han's group followed others, with a teacher leading them all. As they walked past buildings and other structures, the overall feel of the class felt tense. There was a feeling of anticipation with people knowing that they were going into a potentially dangerous situation. Even on Earth, people would get killed or severely injured in environments that were designed for training purposes. He remembered talking to a classmate who had enlisted in the army, and how there would be an accident resulting in a soldier being killed or injured. The worst thing that these students could do was to get too tense and not be able to react appropriately. Situational awareness would be a life-saving skill that these people need to learn quickly. After walking for some time, Han saw a massive structure in front of them. If he were back on Earth, Han would have thought it was a stadium. On the floor level, the stadium had entrances surrounding the base. Each of the openings had arches, making them look very Romanesque. Using a specific entry didn't seem to matter as Ha Yun walked into a random entranceway. Entering the structure, 
Han was amazed by what the residents of this ruined city were able to create. In the hallway, mules were showing epic adventures, fighting monsters, demons, and gods. One of the paintings attracted his gaze, a woman that stood in front of a massive army and brandishing a mighty sword. In front of her, there was an impossibly large number of creatures. With their sheer numbers, they looked like a bottomless pit of teeth and claws. Behind this army of horrors was a black waterfall that seemed to feed the numbers of nightmarish beings. When he walked up to the mule and looked at the woman, Han couldn't see any fear in her eyes. Seeing this image made him wonder if he could do the same as her if he didn't have his powers. Regardless of what world he existed on, there would always be people that were willing to stand in front of insurmountable odds. At the end of the hallway, it opened up to show what looked like a place for citizens to enjoy battles and performances. In the center of the ceiling, there was a stream of sunshine that pierced through the darkness. Instead of lighting up the entire area, the light seemed to focus on a deep gouge in the ground. Seeing this massive hole, it looked like the sunlight was guarding the entrance and keeping whatever darkness sealed inside. Each of the students exclaimed in amazement at such a scene in front of them. When Hayun reached the edge of the hole, she turned around and looked at them. It was a sight to behold the way she stood in the light while the rest of them were in the shadows. This is the entrance to the nest. As I have already told you, the group with four teams will enter first. Though the entrance looks intimidating, just remember that the creatures inside are at a level where you will be able to succeed. If you keep your head, all of you will be able to return to the academy. Heroics will not be tolerated. Keep to your team and group and you will return stronger. Hyun informed them, her voice telling them that foolishness would not be tolerated.